Hey guys, how you guys doing? Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. Today we're going to take a look at Solus OS 4.5 Resilience Edition. That's right. It's come out with the new one and they've done some good changes to it. Solus is a project that for a while was almost thought of as being dead, but they revived it and they have been making improvements to it and it's actually coming along very nicely. So let's go ahead and dive in. Before we jump into the video, um, I would like to take a minute to maybe ask you guys to maybe hit the thumbs up button, please, or even the subscribe button if you haven't subscribed, then the notification button. It only helps me out with uh, maintaining the channel and keeping things going the way we need to. If we go and look over at 9to5Linux, 9 9 to you could see that Solus OS has relieved, uh, has relieved, has uh, released their 4.5 edition, which is the resilience edition, right? And so uh, with it, they're using Calamaris installer, Pipewire, Linux 6.6, .6, and they've even created a new XFCE edition, which is what we're going to take a look at here in a little bit. Uh, some of the things I wanted to do is, is um, it brings the ROCM support for AMD hardware. So that's awesome. It also has the latest GNOME 45.2 and their KDE Plasma is 5.27. Uh, with the KDE aspect, they're looking at eventually going to the 6 um, Plasma 6, which I hear is kind of kind of buggy. On their XFCE edition, this is um, da uh, David Harder who quoted, he says, our XFCE features a traditional desktop layout with a bottom panel and the whisker menu as the application menu. It is using the Kogiar uh, GTK theme and the Papyrus icons for a sleek and modern day look. Blue Man comes installed for all of your Bluetooth needs and the edition has taken a lot of work and we're excited to share it with you all. And that's why I want to take a look at that. Of course, they got their still their budgie and um, their other uh, flagship. That's their flagship one, but their other desktop editions such as GNOME and Plasma available. Um, Plasma is comes with the 5.27, KDE Gear 23.8, Frameworks 5.11. Um, and they are working hard to, like I said, they're, wanna, they're gonna eventually go to the Plasma 6, which I hear the people testing it right now, it's really, really buggy. Uh, Colomaris is a new installer for it, which is awesome. It, it, the reason why they made that jump, as it says in the article, was because it supports BTRFS better and some more new file systems that are, that are out there. Also, um, they switched from Pulse Audio and Jack to Pipewire for better Bluetooth performance. Uh, and then they introduced the ROCKM support uh, to provide GPU acceleration for uh, GPU hungry apps like Blender. And also you could use it for GPU uh, rendering in uh, Caden Live and those kind of things, uh, video rendering. So there's that. Um, also, they got the 6.6 .6 kernel, which is the newest one that has a Mates of 23 in it, Firefox 121, LibreOffice 7.6. And also... Um, they have uh, here that you can download it from their actual official website. So that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at Solus 4.5. So here I have the Solus, uh, in, well, I'm ready, ready to install it into my virtual machine with four gigs of RAM only and four cores of processor. Uh, and I will tell you right now that to boot into it, from the ISO was actually pretty doggone fast. So here I have gone past the welcome screen. I mean, we can go back. Let's, let's do it. So here's the welcome screen. Look next. It already picked my location fine for me. And now I'm at my keyboard. So I'm going to click next and then I'm going to erase the disc. Um, I'm just going to leave it. Eh, we'll do BTFR, BTRFS, uh, no swap. And we're going to give our name. I just want to do this because I want to show people how easy it is to do this. And we're going to put in a super duper strong password that can never be figured out. And this is my summary, which is okay. Standard, you know, Palomaris installer. And here we are. We're installing Solus right now. So I'm going to pause it. And then when it's done, I will come right back to it. All right, not bad. It finished in about, oh, I'd say maybe three to four minutes. And so now we're going to click next because we are all done. 
and or done sorry not next but done and so now we're left with this uh normally i, I guess i don't know maybe i forgot to tick the box but i didn't see the box for reboot so i'm just going to go ahead and reboot and we should be able to log right into our new solace installation and so here we go uses grub for the in the bootloader instead of system b boot and here we are logging in put in our password one thing that i noticed that it does right out of the box that i agree with is the actual color scheme first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to settings and we're going to go to display we're going to change this to 1920 by 1080 and we're going to hit apply and now it should remember that forevermore the theme the coloring theme is very important to me because i being diabetic have issues with my eyes at times and sometimes brightness really affects my my vision and uh it's set up with the dark theme right out of the box i really really like that now solus um a little bit of backstory with solus is that um the main developer walked away from the release when it first came out it, it's actually what put budgie on the map they created budgie and they were a brand new distro that came along that's independent that had a new package manager it uses eopkg manager with all the syntax of the apt package manager uh and dnf you know in install remove search all that good stuff but either way it, they came out with an independent distro that was fantastic and then he just walked away. He, he decided to leave it. And people thought that the project was going to die. It went for a while there, not being worked on for, for a while. No, no real commits being made, that kind of stuff. But recently they, they started working on it again. The new developer or the, the, the original developer also started another distribution. It's up forth and coming has actually been up forth and coming for probably about two years now called serpent OS. If you follow them on X, they do a lot of comments on x uh or a, also known as twitter um they 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 do a lot of posts and updates there on twitter about serpent os so if you're inquisitive about that go over there and follow that uh either way so solus has revived their project so to speak and started making releases and they've done well over the core like they said they've done some major under the hood stuff and so i just wanted to show you how fast it was to install with the calamars installers which you should know that from pretty much any arch install and almost every other installer out there a lot of systems use calamars uh, for their installer but this is the new edition of the xfce edition and like he said it's a standard panel on the bottom with the whisker menu which is right here uh you've got your pinned icons right here which they have their web browser here i just clicked on it and it's a F mozilla firefox fork uh we're going to skip this step skip through all this cr stuff i want to say crap but it's really not crap it's just annoying and we're going to click start browsing and make sure that we are because it said we were on the like the 121 version they said and we go to about and it is the 121 version so there you go so they're pretty uh pretty modern and current once you've seen a browser you've seen them all doesn't matter what they look like they all do the same thing they scour the net uh some of them are a little bit more like tor but web browsers a little different for privacy centric brave browser you know those kind of things but all in all they scour the net they connect you to stuff out in the ethers your file system is going to be the i believe gnome file or thunar it's thunar they're using thunar which looks like thunar okay so i mean they've done well uh your whisker menu is just that it's a menu that is actually uh got all of your stuff right here in your applications for all of them they're categorized under accessories only thing is is it's on the right hand side instead of the left of like some people do like in kde you know it's, your categories are over here on the right but Either way, it's flipped around yeah, in graphics. They got this uh, internet and they got Firefox and Thunderbird for multimedia. Yeah, your typical standard um, XFCE suite of stuff. LibreOffice is already installed. Now that one, I'm not too fond of installing offices on distributions because I think nine times out of 10, the user usually either gets rid of the office because they don't want it on there. Most people don't use office or they'll install the one that they want 
And it's not always Libre. In fact, most people, because if you're in a position to where you need an office for like schooling or something like that, or even work, um, you're going to wind up using Office 365 online. I mean, that's just the reality of it. Microsoft has cornered that. We have to give it to them. Uh, they have cornered the actual Office suite. And so that's what, that's what people do. They do that, and they don't even put an Office suite on your computer because, A, you don't need it, and you don't need to waste your space on it. So as far as settings, it's got all your standard settings, just like you would in any XFCE setup. So, I mean, that's just the typical stuff. And then over here on the right-hand side is your system tray with your calendar that you can click on. Uh, it doesn't have real any interactivity at all. You can do your power session over here, or you can do your power session right here in the top of the application launcher. Uh, so you have the power session in two spots. And then of course you got your volume uh, with your microphone and then you've got your battery status if you are in uh, on a laptop. And of course your notifications will take you to your, you can turn on your do not disturb or any notifications that are there. So that is a look basically at Solus 4.5. Now Solus 4.5, like I said, it, what the reason why I want to make this is because it's an independent distribution that is actually pretty rock solid um, now that they have development again and they've revived it from the dead, but it wasn't really, really dead. It was just unmaintained for a while. But other than that, I mean, they've done really well and I'm looking forward to the new changes that they bring. I hope they're going to make, make their migration to, to, to Wayland. And all the things that come with that, uh, that they don't get left behind on that curve. That's where I'm a little worried as far as Solus is concerned. Uh, I don't know any of the devs for this distribution, but I do know some people that are very closely connected to the devs. And um, I I'm going to find out from him if they plan on doing that yet. I, I know that they're not in a rush to probably do it because they still got a little bit of time, but it is coming. And th I think they should start focusing some of their development onto that migration as with any distribution that's out there because Wayland is the future. Sorry. It just is. And uh, once you embrace that protocol and start migrating to there, it's going to be fantastic. So either way, guys, if you've used Solus before in the past, tell me what you liked about it and what made you not use it no more. Also, if you have any suggestions to anybody that may be looking at using Solus, what could they expect? What could they do to make it a little bit better for themselves? Either way, don't be afraid to comment on the on this video and leave a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. As always, I will tell you, y'all keep doing what you do. Stay blessed. Keep on Linuxing. And I'll see you in the very next one.